okay well I'm not a super musician that's for sure but I do like playing my guitar and I like music a lot so one of the things I thought about doing was building a guitar from a kit yeah you can buy kits and they're not too bad <clears throat> the guitar that I was thinking about um, could be purchased on eBay for about hundred and fifty dollars it's a complete kit of course you have to add your own finishing materials stain paint uh, whatever you want to cover it with but then I got to thinking I've never built an instrument before from a kit <laughs> so should I spend hundred fifty dollars for experimentation well I decided not to do that however my beautiful wife did buy me this <laughs> for Father's Day it is a ukulele and uh, it comes with everything you need it, it's got the the body and the neck right the body and the neck um, it's got a all the other components you need strings the bridges there screws the tuning pegs the nuts all of that sort of stuff and a fingerboard or fretboard um, now I guess the only thing that kind of surprised me about this was this is $25 okay better for me to tear up $25 worth of stuff than $150 worth of stuff so you may be in that position in which case go for something smaller and less expensive to experiment on I was a little disappointed with this good and bad I guess the bad thing is it's plastic the good thing is there's no fret work to be done the bad thing is I was kind of hoping to learn how to do fret work on this and it's plastic front and back don't get mistaken these are just this is just gold paint it's not actual frets so this project is going to take me a while it's going to have to happen over a few weekends now surprisingly enough in the kit there were zero instructions so what I'm going to do is I'm going to formulate my own step-by-step -step on what I think I should do of course I'll modify it as I go along if I find something that needs to be added or taken away so if you want to try your hand at building a ukulele buy one off of eBay $25 $30 and then follow the instructions and uh, and hope you have good luck okay so stand by uh, we're gonna have a lot of clips to follow but for right now you know you get the intro oh and don't forget subscribe and hit the little dingy dong button stand by here it comes So I noticed that the neck didn't fit really well, so I decided to use some sandpaper and fit it around the body, the shape of the body, and then I will try to make the neck fit just a little bit better. See here, I just round it over to the edge of the body, and then take the neck. so that the neck forms to the shape of the body. Here you can see the neck is actually two pieces of wood. Where the fretboard goes, they were a little bit rough and I was afraid it might leave it a little bit lumpy. So I just took the same sandpaper, laid the neck down on it and attempted to sand it smooth. Right at the base of the neck it was really rough uh, and I used the same sandpaper and just worked at it until I worked out that roughness. Then 
then I went to a 220 grit paper and just worked the entire neck, the whole neck, until the whole thing was smooth. Next, using the same 220 grit paper, I worked on the sides to get them smoothed out. Using a small block of wood, I wrap the sandpaper around the wood and ensuring that I sanded with the direction of the grain. sanded it out smooth. After finishing the back, flip over the front. Notice that the grain is going a different direction and we sand it again with the grain of the wood. Now I use some of the paste uh, stain and ensured that I stained the entire both front and back really well. Uh, it did soak the first uh, application in really quickly, so I applied a second application. Next, I taped off everything that I did not want to get black paint on. The entire neck. and the sides of the ukulele. After that was done, we go paint. Using a can of black spray paint, I worked my way around the edges of the ukulele, attempting to make a sunburst pattern. Once the back was finished, turn it around and do the front. Before I glue the bridge down, I wanted to make sure I knew exactly where I could apply glue. So I started by making a temporary installation of the bridge. Then I applied tape around the bridge so that anything underneath the bridge will show is where I can apply glue. The bridge is plastic and the ukulele is wood, so I opted not to use a wood glue, but instead I'm using the 
clear Gorilla Glue. And I apply it to the body of the ukulele as well as the bridge. And then I just took a brush and made sure it was uh, well spread out on both places. coating of glue on both pieces. I reseated the bridge and screwed it down permanently. Now I start applying a glue to the back of the fingerboard. Again, this is a plastic on wood, so I used the Gorilla Glue. And then I ensured that the neck was completely covered. I lightly clamped it in place. Then I ensured the proper placement. Uh, the proper placement of the last fret or the twelfth fret is very critical to keep the ukulele in tune all the way down the fretboard. Next, I cut out my water apply decal. These actually seem to work pretty well. They are laser print, and then you spray it with an acrylic to seal it. And then I'm just very, I'm verifying the proper size and dimensions. Apply the same glue and adhere the nut.
so I finished building my little ukulele kit. <clears throat> and here are the five things I learned. The first thing is have the proper clamps. If you noticed when I was gluing the neck onto the body, I was using two clamps hooked together. Well, kind of more. Well, you saw the video. It, it put a little bit of a twist on the neck and made a little space right in here that, that shouldn't have been there. Uh, had a proper clamp, it probably would have clamped up just fine. Okay, the second thing I learned was these little water transfer decals, they actually work pretty darn good. And I've put a link to these, uh, both the paper and the spray that I used uh, down in the descriptions below. The third thing I found out is that I really didn't care for the paste wood stain. I've always used a more liquid wood stain in the past. The paste wood stain just seemed to be a little bit weird. But, yeah, it, it turned out okay. Okay, the fourth thing I figured out was trying to do this type of a sunburst pattern using a can of spray paint is a little bit difficult on something this small. I think if I was going to do this again, I would probably purchase one of those $25, $30 airbrush uh kits for on Amazon and try to use an airbrush. This is just a teeny tiny little thing to use uh, a spray can on. Again, it didn't turn out real bad, but it was kind of awkward to deal with. Okay, the number one thing, number five, I guess you'd call it, but the, the most important thing, even though it's number five on the list, is the finish. The true oil finish is a real bear to work with. It is a booger bear. It's hard to deal with. Um, I don't know how many times I had to stop and start and stop and start and redo and stop and start. It's just it's just not a good finish to work with, especially for somebody this their first try. Now I've worked with it before, but it was like, you know, 20 years ago and I wished I'd remembered it wasn't fun to play with. Now it turned out okay, but I don't know. Okay, so here's a bonus. This is a number six. The bonus thing I learned about this is I'm glad I started with something small and inexpensive because I would rather do all of this practicing on something that's $25 rather than something that's $125. Now, this isn't done yet <laughs> by any means. The next step is we're going to electrify this. I'm going to put a tuner and a preamp in it. Uh, we'll put a little small PZO type pickup under the bridge with a quarter inch jack. And also if we're going to play this and even if you don't electrify it, one thing you're really going to have to do is to play with this nut. Now if you're looking at the, uh, the strings, the height of the bridge in relation to the neck is fine but this nut is way too tall that makes first doing anything on the first fret very difficult this is harder than my full-size guitar for this teeny tiny little thing uh, so so that's what you're you're probably gonna have to play with this nut a little bit to actually make it playable now one thing I will say you might also if you're happy with the way it looks and feels and comes out you're probably going to want to get a set of better strings. I have tuned these things and tuned these things and tuned these things and they just keep stretching and going out of tune. I don't think it's the gear heads. I'm pretty sure it's the strings. Okay, so that's it for this video. I appreciate you watching this and watching me uh, pull my hair out on building this little ukulele kit. And uh, if you like what you've seen, subscribe. Make sure you hit the little dingy-dong bell there so you get uh, notifications. And above all else, guys, have fun.